G'day everyone, Michael Taylor from 64 Motorsport and welcome to another 5 Minute Fridays. If you own an E46 with the 6 cylinder M54B engine, then no doubt you've had an oil leak or two. And this here is the seal or O-ring that's one of the culprits. But the good news is it's less than $10 US. But despite the fact that it's relatively inexpensive, why is it one of those jobs that people just keep putting off and off? and off. In this episode of 5 Minute Fridays, I'm going to show you what this is, what's involved in terms of changing it, and also explain the other component that you really should change at the same time. So if you're looking for answers for oil leaks on your M54B engine, well, keep watching, because this is going to be a humdinger. Roll intro. <laughs> The o-ring that I'm referring to lives behind here, which is the oil filter housing. If you've watched any of my earlier maintenance videos where I talk about oil leaks, this is one area that I regularly mention. As the o-ring gets hard and brittle, it loses its effectiveness in terms of sealing the oil and keeping it contained between the engine block and the filter housing. So that's a real problem. Because there's several other areas that may leak oil on your M54 engine, how do you know that it's the oil filter housing that's the culprit? Well, the best way is to start having a look from the top of the engine and working your way down. Because the engine sits inside the engine bay and it slants towards the right-hand side or the exhaust side, if it's your valve cover gasket, then you would generally find oil leaking down the right-hand side of the engine. But if the oil is on the left-hand side of the engine, then it can either be the oil filter housing, the dipstick o-ring, or potentially even the oil pan. To help narrow it down, grab a torch and start having a look from the top of the engine. And the area where the cleanest oil is, is generally where the leak is. So if you've got a fair bit of clean oil around this section here, which is at the base of the oil filter housing, then that's a good indication. If the clean oil was further down towards the oil pan, then it's more likely the oil pan gasket. So we've identified that the oil filter housing is the culprit. So despite the fact that the o-ring or the seal is less than $10, why is it one of those jobs that we put off? Well, if you're paying somebody to do it, the labour involved to replace that hovering is, yeah, fairly extensive. Fortunately, I've got the engine out of my E46 and I've already stripped it down, so at least you can see the oil filter housing. But if this was in the car, there'd be the alternator here, the power steering reservoir would be sitting up around here, and the power steering pump would be sort of down here. So to get access to the bolts which secure the oil filter housing, those components either need to be removed or disconnected and moved to one side so that you can get access to this. So before you even start removing the oil filter housing, a mechanic's probably got maybe an hour to an hour and a half's work just to get access to the bolts. And then an hour or an hour and a half's work to reassemble everything. But if you're a half decent home mechanic, it's the sort of job that you can do quite easily at home in your garage. And then you're gonna save all that labor and the money you're saving labor, you can put towards a good quality oil filter and oil and do a full oil change at the same time. Plus, plus there's one other component that you might wanna change while you're mucking around doing this but I'll cover off on that in a sec. Now that we've got everything away, let's get this off so we can have a look at where that seal lives. There we go, we've got it off and oh, it's leaking on me already. Hold on. Even though I've already drained the oil, there's still a little bit of oil in here and it's just weed all over me, damn. That's the housing, this is the back side of the housing and hopefully you can pick it up in the camera. The O-ring and the seal lives in here. Grab your O-ring pick, get underneath the corner, lift it out a little bit, 
and then just peel it out. Now, depending how old this is and how hard it is, it may crack or break when you're trying to remove it. Just be careful if it does that you actually get all the old o-ring and give it a good clean inside. Make sure nothing's fallen in to the oil filled housing before you put your new o-ring in. Give this surface a really good clean. I like to use brake cleaner and a purple scotch bright and you'd want to clean up the mating surface on the block as well. Relatively straightforward job to get it and then you just put your new o-ring in, bolt it all back up, bolt everything else up and happy days. But what's the other thing that you should replace and order at the same time you order your new gasket? Well, apart from an oil filter and some fresh oil, because it's a good idea to change the oil while you're doing this whole process, the next thing is this here. And this is the Vanos feed line. I would seriously recommend that you replace this hose as well. I'll put a link in the description, but the reason is this is just a rubber hose and it doesn't have just a regular rubber cover on it. It's got a cloth anti-abrasive cover on it. But because of its location near all these hot components, near the engine block and the water pump, that rubber will have a tendency to get hard and brittle. So if you're gonna to go to the expense and the hassle of ripping everything out to change that O-ring, replace this hose as well, particularly if you don't have any indication when it was changed. I also like to give everything a really good clean before I reassemble it. So that means giving the filter housing a really good clean, which is just leaking all over me again. As I say, clean up your mating surfaces. But while you've got access, as you can see, there's a fair bit of oil which is gonna sit underneath that, particularly from a leak. So clean the bottom of your oil pan, around the base of the oil filter housing and any areas that you can get access to around the engine block. That's gonna help you later on to pinpoint whether you've still got any additional oil leaks. So if you're gonna do this at home in your garage, allow yourself a Saturday or a Sunday to do it. It shouldn't take you any more than a day to pull it down and put it back together. If you've done it before, it's gonna be half a day probably. But if it's the first time, take your time with it and you won't have any problems. So that's my episode of Five Minute Fridays for this Friday. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you got something out of it. As always, please, I really appreciate it if you'd leave some comments. If you've had to do this job and any tips and handy hints that you can leave for our other viewers to help them out in their E46 maintenance journey, that'd be really cool. If you've enjoyed the video, please smash that like button because it helps out my channel when you do. And if you'd like to see more content on my supercharged E46 325 CI Coupe or my BMW X5, consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification when I upload a new video. But as always, I've thoroughly enjoyed your company. Thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, look after yourselves, stay safe and TTFM. Uh, oil everywhere. What the? Damn. Get the degrees are out. <laughs>